markets. Well, Rajesh Kothari is with us, Managing Director at Alpha Accurate Advisors. Rajesh, a pleasure. Thank you very much for joining us here on Closing Bell. You know, auto angst is uh, a space that you like very well as, uh, as well. But auto angst is, uh, you know, it's a pretty vast area, right? And yesterday, uh, there was a, a lot of excitement around Excide with a tie-up with Hyundai and Kia. Uh, what part of the value chain in, in auto angst uh, are, you, uh, are you bullish on? What do you like? I think, uh, you know, post this, uh, what I would say, change in technology, uh, there'll be clear differentiation between uh, winners and losers uh, within the auto ancillaries. And uh, there'll be many businesses within auto ancillaries which will be get disrupted. And at the same time, there'll be many auto ancillaries which will be capitalizing on this new trend. The benefits are increasing electrification of the vehicle. Very important word, the electrification, right? Uh, the play on safety norms. Uh, the play on a higher content per vehicle, the play on more sensors, and so on and so forth. Please remember, the established auto ancillary companies, maybe say 10, 15, 20 of them, they are fixed. Only 15, 20 companies are established big companies. And any OEM, be it a Hyundai or be it a Suzuki or be it Toyota, they would like to work with these existing companies of 10 to 20 set. And therefore, the size of opportunities for these companies is tremendous. Please also remember that as the more electrification, or for example, you talked about the batteries, as that happens, the content per vehicle goes up significantly. So for example, if you are buying the normal, uh, you know, current battery for your car or for two-wheeler, and when you buy for the electric vehicle uh, battery, or two, whether it's a four-wheeler or two-wheeler, it is not 20, 30% increase. It is a five to 10 times increase in the cost. So it means, the 10x or 7x is the size of opportunity for the any player who is ready to cater to this opportunity. So I think the growth is going to be significantly higher than the underlying volume growth of auto OEM players. And therefore, auto ancillary, uh, we like this space. The very important point is here, the valuations are also quite reasonable. Many of these companies are debt free. Most of these companies have historically 18 to 20% return on capital employed. And they are very, very strong leaders. They all are oligopolies or monopolies in this sector. And they are trading at probably below 20 times price to earning multiple. And I think that's the best combination what we get when everybody talks that markets are at an all-time high and everything is expensive. But we don't think so. And there are so many such opportunities uh, within these established players which you can capitalize. Where else are you sensing opportunities? You know, many of the stocks are great if you already own it. So I was seeing your, you know, top 10, you know, stocks, you've got a trend, uh, that's done very well. Uh, BHEL has also been quite the outperformer. But to enter at current levels, where is the opportunity now, Rajesh? So, well, you know, this companies, what we own, uh, you know, we continue to remain positive, right? Because uh, just, uh, you know, this basically passed. The important is how do we see the future? And unless we are positive on those companies, uh, we would not continue to own, we will get out of it, right? So I think the growth is important and at what valuation are playing that growth, both are important. So the companies what we own portfolios, if you look at our portfolio level, our earnings growth of portfolio is about 25 to 30%. And, uh, you know, and that too with a balance sheet, which is best of the balance sheet and best of the governance. Now, when you put these three things in combined, the large profit size, big growth, and debt-free balance sheet or under leverage balance sheet with the best of the management, uh, definitely you might have to pay a little bit premium. But then it is justified uh, considering the kind of opportunity of what these companies are playing on. Mm, okay. Well, uh, just to go back to the screen, I can't take my eyes off on the move on Hindustan Zinc, by, by the way, right now. It's a 14% move that has come through. Stock I mean, has been an underperformer. Otherwise, if you look at the rest of the market and look at the kind of high flyers we've had in the mid-cap space, but this is absolutely phenomenal what we are getting today. This month's move, again, just April, uh, we're talking 34% on Hindustan Zinc. Big, big one out there. Perhaps the fact that now silver is playing a bit of a catch-up with gold prices. Maybe that's also rubbing off. Uh, and then, of course, uh, good zinc production numbers that Nigel was alerting us on earlier. Uh, you know, Rajesh, let me ask you, hi, good afternoon. Uh, do you have any interest in metals? Where do they, uh, you know, if, where are they in your portfolio if you have any exposure? And any thoughts on, you know, something like a Hindustan Zinc? Uh, it's a composite play on a lot of things. No, currently we do not have any exposure on metals and, uh, you know, I think the why we don't have exposure because uh, many of these things are unpredictable, particularly 
the tariff policies by the you know the uh, you know the global countries be it us be it china be it india and that keeps changing so extremely volatile very difficult to predict uh, nevertheless uh, one thing is for sure the metal companies balance sheets have improved significantly in last uh, two and a half three years post covid and uh, therefore one round of relating is happening because of that uh, you know the, but currently we don't have any exposure and i think there are enough opportunities to play uh, beyond metal which are more uh, stable more predictable and with a better uh, balance sheet and uh, better growth opportunities all right uh, rajesh just hold that thought you know so we just want to make one point on hindustan zinc uh, there's a free float factor as well that plays out right because vedanta limited has 65% the government of india has 30% and institutions mm. have more than 3% so effectively there is only 2% that is tr freely freely traded stock 2% at the most so that's why in fact you normally see such large size moves on that the fundamentally yes that is the play on on silver but valuation wise as well you know i think going by today's stock price it's out of whack you know on an ev upon a beta basis as well it's more than 10 times also the float is very limited so that's why the other way of playing it is go with vedanta which is a more liquid name and which has 65% stake in hindustan zinc so just want to tell our viewers that and the street is working with around 25 25 and a half dollars per ounce and current pricing is close to 28 dollars per ounce so that's the reason why there is an upside that's coming in there so just uh, clearing out the end that's why you see such large size moves on stocks like um, like hindustan zinc uh, well let's go back to rajesh rajesh i recall you know on the travel and leisure space you were quite positive you were playing it by a different ways uh, what is your thought process now on that space we continue to own uh, you know uh, one of the uh, largest luggage uh, you know player uh, in the industry they continue to gain market share and we are quite positive on this uh, overall leisure as a theme as an opportunity and uh, i think uh, here again uh, the consolidation the benefits of the new product launches uh, the benefits of uh, you know better product mix all that basically goes in favor of safari uh, which we continue to own uh, for almost like two and a half three years is one of the biggest uh, success story uh you know uh, uh you know portfolio particularly near our triple a budding beast uh, please put a disclaimer because uh, this is a company which we uh, own for our clients in our triple a budding beast pms mm. uh rajesh uh, you know i i know that you typically stay away from talking about names but uh, what have you uh, sort of bought recently if you can share anything new which uh, which has come on your radar Uh, i believe uh, you know there was a big block which happened uh, the company called max estates and you you uh, sort of picked up some quantity I, i'm i'm not sure but just uh, if you want to confirm or and tell us what else have you done uh yeah uh, please put a disclaimer yes we currently own uh, you know uh, the, the, you know max estate what the company what you mentioned uh, we, we we believe that the real estate is a is a definitely good story last 3 years have been good typically the cycle lasts for you know 7 to 8 years and within this entire you know the universe of the real estate companies there are only few companies on which you can trust in terms of the corporate governance in terms of the balance sheet in terms of the you know the trust uh, from the customers perspective and so on and so forth uh, max is one of them uh, and surely uh, you know kind of growth plan what you look at it uh, you know uh, and kind of what i would say the launch is what they have done in a very niche player noida market player Uh, is being uh, phenomenally successful. So uh, you know we like this story and we believe the company will do well. In terms of otherwise, you know the action plans. Uh, you know pharma is one sector uh, which we are adding from last uh, you know two months or so. Uh, I think uh, pharma space is showing good opportunities. Uh, the growth uh, for F five twenty five and F five twenty six is going to be better. The U S pricing pressure is over from last two quarters. and i think uh, from here again the growth will going to do uh, you know a little bit better compared to uh, the overall universe and the valuations are again reasonable you know please remember when the markets are at this level uh, there are two important things to keep evaluating one is the growth and second is at what valuations you are buying the growth uh, i think the in that uh, what i would say matrix uh, pharma fits well so we have been adding to pharma space uh, from last uh, few months apart from auto ancillaries uh, which we talked about both fits into our you know growth at reasonable valuations you know uh, so these are the basically opportunities what we are doing uh, in uh, the recent actions sorry uh, rajesh you said uh, ma matrix is it no what i'm saying this basically fits our oh, the in the matrix in the okay yeah. okay all right okay okay got that got that sorry i thought so you were potentially right. both fits our matrix of growth at reasonable valuations got it got, got it, it. um uh, rajesh uh, you bought i think you own some mid cap it names birla soft kpit coforge 
these are some, some stocks which feature in your portfolio or at least had. Would you look to expand that list of, you know, the IT stocks or are you just comfortable with these three? I think uh, we are comfortable with these three. Uh, you know, one of the product company we are evaluating within IT uh, and there are a few platform companies what we are evaluating uh, in IT. Uh, we already own one of the largest uh, platform company, uh, you know, which is in the insurance space from quite some time. And we are evaluating few more such platform companies uh, within IT. So IT, we are basically dividing between a normal IT space, a number one, number two product companies, where we have the few companies in our portfolio. And number three is the platform companies. So we are more becoming increasingly, we are adding exposure to the product companies and also the platform companies. The normal IT services weightage, uh, we are quite comfortable where we are, uh, but the other two weightages we are adding up, uh, you know, so, and it is doing quite well. So when you mean platform, you mean a company like rate gain or and not product companies, right? You, you, you are right. We, we do not own that name, but we own, for example, uh, you know, Intellect. It is part of our fact sheet. It is disclosed to investors. Please again put a disclaimer. Mm. So we own Intellect, which has been doing well. Again, when we bought this company, it was trading at around 23, uh, you know, 22 times actually price to earning multiple, the product company, and with a good growth. Uh, of course, the stock has uh, done extremely well for us, already up probably 40, 50% uh, since our purchase price. But we keep evaluating such names uh, as a product companies as well as the platform companies. Okay. All right, uh, Rajesh, we will leave it there for today. Thank you very much for uh, joining in. Good to get uh, that perspective and uh, a lot of that advice from you. Well, with that, we do have to